Kevin Gordon here from Autosavant.com coming to you from the 2013 Kia Soul. This particular Kia Soul is the Exclaim model, or the one with the exclamation point after the name. The Soul comes in base trim, plus trim, and exclamation point trim, or exclaim trim. This is the top of the line model. Uh, this one's also outfitted with the premium package with nav, uh, as well as a few other little options and stickers at about $22,500 with destination, right? Delivery fees, all that kind of good stuff comes in just above $23,000. The Soul is an interesting little car. It, it sort of is outside of a lot of other categories of cars out there. You could, you know, Compared to the Nissan Cube or the former Scion XB, uh, what it winds up being is a subcompact chassis or platform. This is actually a, I believe, older version of the Kia Rio underneath um, with a big box on top of it. And one that looks pretty good, you know, the, the Soul in this iteration, at least from a looks perspective, has been around for a few years, but in the Exclaim version, uh, they've done a nice job of dressing it up without really going too ostentatious and overboard. You know, it's got LED running lights, and there's a bunch of interesting creases uh, around the light housings, both front and rear. This one in its molten orange color uh, with its 18-inch wheels really is a pretty sharp-looking little vehicle when you get right down to it. And because it's an actual box, it's not you know cut off, sloping roofed, compact utility vehicle, it's really amazingly practical for its footprint. You know, you go drive this thing around in the city and go to parallel park it, it's tiny. It really fits in small spaces, but it's got four usable seats. I mean, I put my kids in full-size booster car seats back there, no problem. I drove colleagues from work around, put them in the back seat. Nobody had to slide their front seat forward to make room for them. I mean, is it super cushy back there? No, but it really does the job. It's one of those cars that, uh, despite being so small on the outside, has quite a bit of room on the inside. And even behind the second row of seats, there's still a reasonable space for luggage back there. You know, I've got a camera box back there, a bag full of other GoPros and you know other items, uh, a backpack, a gym bag, and you know all of it fits in there really without issue. It's uh, an amazingly practical little package. With the premium package on top of the Exclaim edition of the Soul, you get pretty much every luxury feature you could expect to get for $23,000. You get real climate control, fully automatic, you know, you set your temperature and go. Uh, you get navigation with traffic, you get infinity stereo with speakers all over the place, you get heated seats, you know, phone connectivity, multiple charging points, leather surfaces on the seats, although it's a pretty good stretch to call this any form of leather, you get power folding side mirrors, sunroof, you really do get an enormous amount for the money. And believe it or not, I think the biggest compliment I can give the Soul after being with it for a week is the fact that no part of it did I hate. And I know that seems weird, but a lot of times when you get into these more practical economy-based cars, there's always something about them that, you know, leaves you wanting. It's like, I, I, it's hard to put a specific finger on, but really the Soul does everything you'd want it to reasonably well. On the inside, the, you know, interior materials aren't necessarily top quality, but everything's handsome enough, you know, they've actually tried to do something with the design with these big speaker pods up front and the tweeters up on the dashboard. Uh, there's definitely some thought that was put into when they made this thing now. One of the good examples is I was driving, you know, it's the winter here in southeastern Pennsylvania, so the sun's always low in the sky and a little bit glary. Well, I'm driving along with east-facing sun coming in the window, and I notice that, look, like they bothered to put a full telescoping sun visor over here. Nice little feature. The glove box has two big compartments. 
The one on the bottom, you can keep all your normal sort of manuals, power, yeah, owner's manual, that kind of stuff. And above it's still another big space to keep stuff if you need it. The center console is a decent size. The cup holders work well. You know, from an ergonomics perspective, at least of, you know, thought of storage and those types of things, they've done a good job. Now, as far as ergonomics in a driving position, the other nice thing that the box of a Soul does for you is you get a very upright driving position. You know, in a car that's this size, typically you sort of sit down into it and feel like you're sitting with your feet stretched out in front of you. Well, I've got the seat all the way as low as it'll go, and it is power adjustable for height. I mean, excuse me, it's manually adjustable for height and you know, fore and aft and seat back and all that kind of good stuff. So it's a six-way seat. And even with the seat as low as it'll go, you still get a nice drop to your feet to the floor, which means that the, you know, sort of short thigh support, minimally bolstered seat doesn't come across to me as uncomfortable. It's been a, you know, comfortable thing over the week we've had it, and we took it for a couple long trips. The steering wheel's a big chunky thing with, you know, all the buttons you might expect, cruise control, voice control, phone controls, and stereo controls. Um, all this stuff's good, you know, they've got two stocks, one for wiper stuff, one for lights. I'd say the only complaint that I've had about that is where the indent is for the automatic lights, which again, is a nice feature, right? You don't have to worry about turning your lights on and off, it works with the sun going up and down. But where the automatic light indent is, at least for me, I find as I use the turn signal, I'm constantly turning it off. So. Um, you know, a little niggly thing, but again, one of those things that you probably wouldn't notice on a test drive that you might want to check out. The technology that comes with the premium packaged Exclaim version of the Soul, you get, uh, you know, the Kia nav interface, which works pretty well. Only complaint there is you have to actually press the accept button every time you get in the car to actually see the map screen. It isn't one of those that it just shows you the dummy message that eventually gives up and just gives you the map. If you forget, you'll notice like, oh, I've been driving for half a day and I've never actually seen the nav map. Um, it's got actually knobs for volume and tuning, so no complaints there. The climate control stuff and buttons are logically laid out. All the stuff works really well. You can do most of it in gloves. The touchscreen doesn't work with them, but um, considering the fact that it's far below freezing uh, in Pennsylvania today, then it's handy to be able to be around in gloves and still change radio stations, do all that kind of good stuff. So the Soul is available with two different four-cylinder engines. The base model comes with a 1.6 liter inline four that's direct injected. Um, and the upscale models come with a two liter that's still a fuel injected engine. And, you know, it's, uh, it does an okay job of motivating uh, the 26 or 2800 pounds that uh, make up the Soul. It's got a six speed automatic transmission, it works pretty well. Uh, in city driving you know, around town, really you could almost call this car peppy. Uh, on the highway, because of its box profile, if you're driving it on higher speed highways, right, 70 miles an hour and up, you will find it hunting gears uh, with the six speed automatic. And I think that's just because there's not an enormous amount of torque available in the two liter engine. Because of its economy car underpinnings, and there's nothing all that special going on with the suspension tuning. I haven't found it to really be overly busy, even though it's got the big 18 inch wheels with 45 series low profile tires on it. Uh, noise in here seems to be just about on par with everything else in its class. Sure, there's a little bit of wind noise, a little bit of road noise, but nothing worse than you're gonna find sort of in this range of cars. It steers reasonably well, the brakes work well. Really, from a driving perspective, again, the sort of compliment there winds up being is there's nothing that it does that really makes you take notice, which is, I think, most of what you can ask for in this class and category of car. 
So there we go, the 2013 Kia Soul Exclaim Edition. Uh, really uh, amazingly practical. I think it's a good value for the money car that you know, parks easily, it drives reasonably well. Um, and really, if you're in the market for a compact SUV, I would give one of these a look. Uh, you get a lot of practicality as a result of it really being a square on wheels. And, you know, it, it's been a nice companion for the week. That, Kevin Gordon from Autosavant.com. Look forward to talking to you guys soon.